We thought there'd be maybe a dozen ideas of what to do this afternoon, and there were 37 of them, right? And, and, and then we had to reconfigure back. That's innovation, that's innovators, that's the kind of energy we want to have here. But to kind of wrestle the two pieces together a little bit and have a final conversation with all of us here, we want to tee it up with Catherine Fulton, who has been watching the meeting with a different set of eyes, and hopefully we'll have some ideas of how to start synthesizing what's going on here before we get to the final next steps. So who among here would like to be me at the moment? <laughs> Synthesizing this day. Um, you know, it's too early in the Next Agenda process to do really a synthesis. Um, and it, you know, certainly it's too big and too complex for intellectual coherence of what we did today in five minutes. Um, that's for the months ahead, and it's what editors are for. I used to be an editor. Um, so I can uh, know that that's what's going to happen and quiet reflection of all of us. Um, you know, our job has been to create the raw material today. I think almost like a, a puzzle that we've been turning the pieces up around us. Uh, and I think we've made a really good stab at that. There are a lot of really good ideas here and a lot of uh, great energy. It's been a real privilege to be here. What I actually want to do is something a little bit different. Um, and I, very quickly, I want to reflect on the emotional rhythm of the day, and I want to enter a new note into the conversation. You know, we had the science, and we had the social science, and think of me as the humanities. Um, in the morning, we talked about power in one sense of that word. Uh, we had, uh, we were reasonable, and we were reasoned, and we listened to technical solutions, to um, the problem of electric power generation, electric power generation. And it was, I know, for me, a real relief to actually understand that it was possible, technically, to do some of these things. Uh, and the engineers and the scientists were wonderful, and they helped us with that. And then we entered the afternoon, and we talked about power in a different meaning of that word. And Gillian uh, Caldwell told us that no, we actually can't innovate our way out of this problem because it's actually not just a problem of electric power generation. It requires uh, massive adaptation and it needs all of us. Um, and it's not something the engineers can fix. Um, the, then we entered a sort of interesting maze where in some ways I think we all had an emotional experience of just the complexity of everything we'd been talking about very rationally, because all of a sudden there were 37 or 38 ideas. And of course there's no silver bullet, we know that, but it, we had an experience. And I went into the bathroom and I heard people critiquing the process and I heard people you know, saying for sure we could do this better and this idea was missing and where's the coherence and all of this. And, and in the world that I live in, I, I, that's often called, you know, it's often the moment when you know the, the meeting is actually getting started because then we're actually confronting in some way our powerlessness uh, in the face of that kind of complexity. Um, and then we went into these small meetings and the energy shifted again and we began to realize actually we can do something and we began to confront what it means in a deeper way, but of course we only still just got started. Um, and this all reminded me of the first time I walked into a therapist's office when I was 20 years old. And I was uh, stumbled into the college health center and I was in fact dealing at that time with some very difficult issues of life and death and I told my tale of woe to this therapist, I barely knew what a therapist was, and she looked at me and she said, you know, if you weren't depressed, you'd be sick. <laughs> <laughs> and it was actually deeply reassuring. Uh, and you know, I know that I feel that if I weren't afraid, I'd be sick at this moment after listening to what we listened to today. Um, as my friend Paul Hawken has, uh, has said, the, it will be the stroke of midnight for the rest of our lives. Uh, and I think you know, that's why we're here, because we know that it's a really big challenge. Raise your hand if you feel scared. Raise your hand if you feel hopeful. I think that's the essence of the human condition, and it's something that we actually feel quite profoundly, I think, in the midst of this, and which is what I want to say in, in terms of entering a, a new note uh, into the conversation, which is that I don't think we're going to fix this with either uh, just with rational argument or all the great innovative ideas in the world. We have to have those. That's how we'll fix it. 
but the energy to do it and the will to do it is actually also going to have to come from another part of the human spirit, from our resilience and from the mystery and from why is it that people ever change, and calling on something uh, much larger in the way that that amazing picture of the whole earth did when it actually got us to see the fragility of the planet. We're going to need imaginative acts like that. We're going to need our artists. So what I want to do is read you a very brief poem by one of the great artist environmentalist, Wendell Berry. Some of you may know this poem. And I want to invite you for a moment to look outside. If you can see the, the bay, see the bay. If you can only see the trees, see the trees. And get yourself for a moment into a place about why this matters. The peace of wild things. When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be. I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me the day-blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world, and I am free. Wendell Berry. So I want to invite us, as we think about this next agenda, to think about why we're so passionate about this, why we're here, and go with where that leads us um, into the moral imagination that that gives us in addition to all the engineering solutions and the practical solutions and the social media solutions. Um, because I think it's going to take transcending pragmatism uh, to tap into something larger to find, to really get where we need to go in the next 20 years or the next 10 years or tomorrow. Thank you very much. <laughs>